Saying we really out here in Philly, real Toronto niggas out here in Philly, not them other guys, you know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas yeah. know what the fuck it is, we really be out here, you heard? Yeah. <laughs> right on your Seagull Street, nigga. <laughs> niggas can't come. Oh man, we out here in Philly, top hood, you know what I'm saying? I read that. I don't even know how to work the gram snacks. I'm like you, I'm good in Philly, nigga. <laughs> I work the gram snacks. I'm like you, I'm good in Philly, nigga. <laughs> Words, or five, anything, and then Tory Lanez, you tell us. The first thing that comes to mind. Tory Lane. <laughs> Dylon, Dylon, Dylon. <laughs> Drizzy. I'm better. <laughs> Good ass. Five words or five anything, and then Tory Lane's, you tell us the first thing that comes to mind. Tory Lane. <laughs> Dylon, Dylon, Dylon. <laughs> Drizzy. I'm better. <laughs> Good ass. I told Jackie Dempson, check it out. Now, let me tell you how this, man. Our Tory Lane's and Drake. We got to stop talking around. We got to just address it head on. Let's be frank. When Tory Lanez does an interview these days, everybody, you and me, we kind of scroll through it to see what the fuck he said about Drake. Unfortunately, the most interesting thing about Tory Lanez as an artist outside the music, because he's making some dope music, the controller remix, fire. That love song, even though it's a ripoff of the Tanto Metro and Devante, so listen, fire. Okay? He has some good music, right? However, when you hear him in an interview, when you hear him, and this is this is the telltale sign that people haven't fully bought into him yet, just as a person, is that the most interesting things that come out of all these interviews isn't about his love life, isn't about like just awkward things about him, it's about Drake. People want to hear what he has to say about the biggest rapper in the world who's also from his city, and they want to hear about their relationship or their lack of relationship, all right? So I heard Tory Lanez, who's on a press run recently, he's been asked about Drake, 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 Drake. Goes up to Sway. He said 20 questions about Drake within the first five minutes. He had to basically say, I ain't with it. Ask me about me. But unfortunately... What has been somewhat of a, a, a promotional strategy by Tory Lanez is kind of coming back to Biden. Because check this out. You see, and, and don't get it fucked up and twisted for a second. Tory Lanez initially tried to lump himself with Drake because if you could be in the same conversation as the biggest rap artist, it kind of elevates your stature. Even without the songs to back it, because trust and believe, I love a lot of Tory Lane songs, but they aren't doing the numbers on the Billboard charts yet for him to be in a conversation with a Drake. Trust me, okay? But if he could kind of get in that conversation by saying he's coming for the top spot or saying him and Drake might have issues because he wants to be number one and Drake Drake don't like that or whatever the case is, it makes it feel like he's a competitor, even though the numbers say they're not. There's no competition. Drake has no fucking competition. So, in reality, it, it's like word association or name association. So it helped Tory Lanez at first. However, after a couple songs and it's kind of bubbling on the net, he kind of wants to stand on his own. And unfortunately, people still only want to hear about his relationship with him and Drake. Now, he went to um, a DC station. And he basically had an interview, and they did word association. And they said, okay, they, they're going to say a couple of words, and they're going to, whatever comes to his mind, he's going to repeat. And he says, when they say Drake, he says, I'm better than him. Now, there's nothing wrong with him saying he's better than Drake. He's a rapper. He should feel like he's better than Drake. But, but again, because these things become headlines, Right, And because these things overpower everything he done on this press run, if he was there to promote a single or promote an album or promote a project, it all gets overpowered and overshadowed as soon as you mention Drake. Honestly, at this point, he has to reverse his way of actually moving and separate himself from Drake. Because at this point, trust me, everything outside the music... People look for his correlation to Drake. Do you think he's actually better than Drake? In my opinion, I think he's supremely talented. Do I think he's better? I don't know. Is he making more hits? That is a definite no. Right? But is he better talent-wise? I don't know. 
it, it could be left to be proven, right? There's a lot left to be proven. I think he has time. I think he has a lot to grow. But I think he's kind of jumped into the number one contender spot by really associating himself with Drake. Like, come on, think about it. This guy say he's going for number one, acting like Kendrick don't exist, acting like J. Cole don't exist, acting like there's not a long list of niggas who would be number one before him. So it's really name association. However, it comes back to bite you because when you do an interview, they're only going to ask you about that one guy. They're only going to ask you about that one guy. Oh, uh, so Tory Lanez, what's up, bro? What's up? But anyway, what's up with you and Drake? Yo, Tory Lanez, what's up, man? Haven't seen you ever. But um, what's up with, uh? why did Drake say this in his song at you? That's what's happening. That's why we see the constant flip-flop of Tory Lanez. He's a dope artist, but honestly, man, um, his correlation to Drake, which I believe was a part of his uh, marketing campaign at first, is come back to bottom because every time he does an interview, the headline will be something he said about Drake. So you be the judge. Is he better than Drake? Was it a good strategy? You let me know. Get in the comments. Like, definitely subscribe to Watch Academics. I'm out.